Hello everyone, Minikins here. Monster Hunter World has received the last three major update in the form of Fatalis, and I've been excited to look at his weapons and armor. Fatalis is brutal and it did take me several attempts to defeat him, mostly due to running out of time solo, while in SOS groups players were fainting before I even had a chance to fly into the arena. Fortify is useful here, but not when everyone thinks to use it at the same time. It's a rough fight, but the rewards are definitely worth it. The best armor and weapon has to go to the Palico. You can create your own little dragon pet, complete with Hunter on the back, which is actually the weapon. You can change the color of the dragon to your personal taste or just to match your outfit. I love the detail on this weapon. Pretty much sums up my day one Fatalis experience. As for the Hunter, there's two armor sets you can make. The set bonus is Fatalis Legend. The two set bonus is Inheritance, which removes the skill cap for skill secrets. What that basically means is that two pieces of this armor will allow you to exceed the base cap for the various skills, meaning that Divine Blessing can go to level 5, Agitator can go to level 7, Maximum Might can go to level 5 without using the armor that usually offers this benefit. So basically, two pieces of Fatalis armor is going to be very useful in a lot of builds. The 4 set bonus Transcendence grants True Razor Sharp Spare Shot. For melee players this reduces the sharpness loss and for bowgun players it has a chance not to consume ammo. This aspect is very useful during hunts to reduce time sharpening your weapon or reloading. Health and stamina plus 100 at the start of a quest or after fainting. This caps your health and stamina at 200 meaning you don't need to use vitality jewels or a max potion at the start of a mission. It also acts like the skill stamina cap up, increasing your maximum stamina, amazing for stamina hungry weapons. Adding in extra vitality jewels will not increase the health above 200, so there will be no point in using them with builds that have this 4 set bonus. The armor is very nice, every piece has notably higher defense than other armor, the sheer amount of slots across both armors is insane. I hope you guys have a lot of tier 4 jewels ready to slot in, as this is just the alpha version. The beta version Capcom have decided just to give you max slots. You will be able to equip almost any skill you want for any weapon, as long of course as you have the jewels. This set is going to be pretty much an endgame build option for many weapons. Although it doesn't have Master's Touch, True Razor Sharp is very potent and it doesn't rely on affinity. As tough as the fight can be, this is something worth grinding out for. There are some charms that can be upgraded using materials from Fatalis. The Exploiter Charm to level 3 which gives you plus 3 weakness exploit. The Handicraft Charm giving you level 5 handicraft. Those golden dragon spires are from the Master Rank called Tarath event. You can craft these at the Elder Melder if the event isn't available using Celestial Wyvern prints. However, I think you may need to have completed the quest once before or obtained the material at least one time before it unlocks the option. As for the weapons, well, the raw damage is huge. Raging Bracadilla's weapons were considered some of the highest raw with purple sharpness. And if we look at the Fatalis weapon, it kind of blows it out of the water, almost 200 attack higher. The potential for better sharpness. Affinity minus 30 is a lot, but at least 10 of that can be gotten back through the augment. Not to mention that maximum might is more useful now you can slot in 5 of this armor, so it increases affinity as soon as your stamina is full. This great sword is going to pack a punch. I'm just going to showcase all of the weapons you can get, I haven't made them all, just reloaded the game way too many times so I could show them all off. If you like the designs of these weapons, you can also make them as a lured weapon through the augment at the smithy.
This fight lives up to the challenge of the legendary Black Dragon and brings back the satisfaction I got when finally downing the Extreme Behemoth in the base game. I didn't want this hunt to be easy, and although Fatalis does have one-shot mechanics, it adds to the urgency of the fight and how powerful the legendary Black Dragon is. Although this is the last free major update for World, there are some upcoming events in the near future, like AT Volcano and a new fest in the form of a Halloween event, which I'll be covering in detail, so be sure to return for that one. If you'd like to know a little bit more about the lore behind Fatalis and what he looked like in older games, feel free to check out my video Spotlight I made for him when I heard of his announcement. I have no idea why Capcom made this quest Master Rank 24 or higher, since it's one of the most challenging fights in the game. It can set false expectations from newer players in Iceborne on what they can achieve. While skill is an obvious factor, gear and augments cannot be ignored. I'll have a detailed Vitalis guide out on the channel soon and will include build ideas for different weapons and tips to help with the battle. Thanks for watching, please support the channel by liking and subscribing and I'll see you next time.